Good morning, St. Mary's. Oh, I do love this Sunday, mostly because there's a whole lot of activity going on here on the front pews, which there usually is not, which suspect, which, which points out that there's something really special happening this, this morning. And of course there is. We welcome our children and our youth uh, for our children's Christmas pageant this morning, and we are so glad that you all have chosen to share the gospel with us in this way, and so glad you all have joined us to hear the gospel in this way. But as I've been thinking about it, and I've been watching the kids practice the last, the last couple of weeks and getting to hear them and, and all of their different timbres, I got these little kids with these beautiful high voices, and then I got my son who talks like this. It's going to be it's gonna be something today. But I kept thinking, when it comes right down to it, one of the beautiful things about Christmas is that we know and we discover that the gospel gets presented in lots and lots of different ways. But at Christmas time, it seems that the two best ways are through music and through the mouths of children. And I think every one of us would be like, you know what? Yeah. In music and through the mouths of children, children telling this beloved story yet again, we come face to face again with the most basic truth of our faith, which is that God comes down to be with us and to show us the way of life. And so today is not just a pageant. Of course, it is that. But it is not just a pageant. Today is a special way to hear the gospel again, perhaps for the first time, perhaps for the hundredth time, but nevertheless to hear that story again and to remember God's love, which comes to us in our, in our very smallest people and our very oldest people, those who are hearing it for the first time and those who are hearing it for the hundredth time. God comes to be with us today. And so today we hear the gospel yet again, and we invite you to open your hearts to that in all the ways that we're going to do that today. And so in preparation for that, we invite you into a moment of silence. You know, it's a wet day outside, a lot of commotion going on. Just bring yourself fully in here. Just let yourself kind of calm and to sit and to be present in this space as we ready ourselves to worship. morning. Please join me in the call to worship as printed on the first page of your bulletin. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We come to prepare the way, the hope of Christ, the peace of Christ, We cry out together in the wilderness. Kingdom of heaven has come here. 
We come to be part of the light. Our hymn is number 117 from the New Century Hymnal, which is the um, in your pew. It's Lift Up Your Heads, O Mighty Gates. And now I'd like to invite the Hutchison family to come forward to light the Advent wreath and to read the Advent reading. There's a quietness that comes to us. When we take a moment to feel the bareness in our lives, we discover our own inner wilderness, a wilderness that, as it turns out, becomes a very whim of our hearing the voice of the Spirit. That seems to be where Luke wants to take us in his Advent story, because he immediately moves us from Elizabeth's bareness to Zechariah's encounter with the angel of God in the temple. It's there during Zechariah's time of burning incense, a type of prayer that the angel visits him with good news. He's all alone. Zechariah's attention is toward God. The final, and finally, he's quiet enough to listen to the voice calling him out to the wilderness. Feeling our own bareness does not does that anticipation does that it increases our faith makes room for God to speak sharpens our spiritual ears because God isn't so interested in competing with the noise of our world and it is noisy now more than ever it's possible to live from wake to sleep again without ever being quiet enough to feel the depths of of us where God lives. We can become forgivers to our foreigners to ourselves, unwittingly crowding God out. Like Zechariah, we need to turn toward our own inner temple, toward hateful silence, solitude, and stillness, and not toward the quick satisfaction of our noisy world that we might hear the Spirit speaking to our aches. 
And how does this voice God arrived to us? The same way it did to Zechariah with the world with the word of peace. Do not be afraid. When we unnoise our life and build the place prayer with us, peace becomes a continual reality. We no longer live at the mercy of circumstance, but can experience firsthand what Jesus meant when he said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Experiencing the peace that transcends all understanding. To, to anticipate the arrival of Christ, we must make room, draw ourselves away, and listen. When we do, we inherit a Advent peace. And as we're about to see, it's in a very place, pray for listening, that the seed of our promise is about to be planted within us. As we like the Advent wreath, we invite you to sing verses 1 and 2 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Please join me in the collect for the second Sunday in Advent. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake their sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11, and you can find it on page 667 of your pew Bible. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I said, What shall I cry? All the people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord bl blows upon it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. 
Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his rep recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Please join me with the, in the responsive reading from Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2 and 8 through 13. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Our final reading for this morning comes to us from the gospel according to St. Mark from the first chapter, who surely had those words of Isaiah in his mind when he wrote this. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. And now I'd like to invite the children to come forward to present their Christmas program, the Rehearsal Free Christmas Pageant. Congregation, they ask that you participate in the songs that will be throughout their presentation and the words will be on the screens. In the Genesis story, we hear that God created a world with language. God said, let there be light. God said, let there be night and day. God said, it is good. Then in the first chapter in the Gospel of John, we hear how this language, the word, the word is with God and Jesus. In the beginning was the word, 
and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and life was the light of all people. The true light, which helps everyone to see, was coming into the world. Jesus was in the world, and the word that shaped the world was him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of flesh or of the will of man, but of God. It is Jesus, a child of God, who by being close to the Father's heart has made God known. first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, we learn about Mary's willingness to work with God, even though what's being asked will not be easy. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the message of God, Gabriel, was sent by God to the town of Galilee called Nazareth to an unmarried woman engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, Joseph of the house of David. The young woman's name was Mary. And Gabriel said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But Mary was very perplexed by his words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. Gabriel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, and now you will conceive your, in your womb and bear a son. His, son will, his name will be Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The child will be born holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the six months of her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel of God departed from her. The place of Jesus' birth is in Bethlehem, a small town a few miles south of Jerusalem. But Bethlehem was not Joseph or Mary's hometown. They had to go to Bethlehem because Caesar Augustus had made a law that everybody must be counted in the towns where their great-great-grandparents or ancestors had been born. This was a long trip to travel by foot, about 60 miles or three days time. It would have been even more difficult since Mary was pregnant. When Mary and Joseph finally made it to Bethlehem, the hotel was already filled, and there was no place for Mary and Joseph to stay. But there was a stable where the animals rested that Mary and Joseph were allowed to rest in as well.
this stable with only Joseph to help her, Mary gave birth to a baby boy. She wrapped him up in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger. Mary and Joseph named him Jesus. Now it was nighttime, and in the fields nearby, shepherds were watching their flocks. Then an angel stood before the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone around, all around them. And the shepherds were terrified, but the angel of the Lord said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Oh to you, born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth lying in a manger. Immediately after the angel stopped speaking, there were suddenly many angels praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. I'll tell you when. Then the angels left the shepherds, and the shepherds took a deep breath, or maybe five or six deep breaths. Then they looked at each other and said, We better go see the, this baby. We better go see the baby. <laughs> So this stable that Mary, Joseph, and Jesus were staying was, as you heard earlier, home to some of the animals of the village. And these animals must have been pretty curious as, what to, a, as to what a baby was doing in their feeding trough. If animals had thoughts, some of them might have sounded like this. Hey, this baby sure is cute, but where did our dinner go? And what are all these humans doing in our home? Let's smell them to find out. So it was quite likely that these animals have gathered around Mary, Joseph, Jesus, Jesus, and the shepherds to take a closer look.
Now when the shepherds saw Mary, Joseph, and Jesus in the stable, and saw that the angel had said them was true, they went out and made it known to whoever they met, which means it's very possible that some of the townspeople went to that stable that very night to see and maybe help Mary, Joseph, with, with Jesus because of what the shepherds had told them. In the meantime, in the meantime, when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. He secretly did not want there to be any king but himself. He called together all the chief priests and teachers of the law. He asked them where Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi and secretly found, the Magi and secretly found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, "Go make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may go and worship him." After they heard the king, they went on their way and. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the stable, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of frankincense and of myrrh. And, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Well, look at us. What a full and busy stable we are. In all of the busyness of moving around, it is possible, for, possible to forget why we came here in the first place. So I remind us today that we celebrate and remember the birth of Jesus, but not just because he was born, but because of the life that Jesus lived. The baby Jesus grew into an adult Jesus, an adult who chose to live God's way all the time. It is exciting that Jesus was born in a manger. But what is more exciting is that Jesus was born of a mother just like us and grew up just like us. Then, when he was all grown up, he chose to live God's way and said to us, you can do this too, and here, I'll show you how. Just follow me. This good news today is why we celebrate Christmas, because Christmas is the story that reminds us that any and all of us can choose to live God's way and live as God's children. So let us go from here today, giving thanks to God for Jesus and reminding others that the gift of Jesus is to, choose, is to choose to live God's way and live to show us we can do the exact same thing. Amen.
let's give those kids another hand. And please join me now with the reading of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you all very much. Please be seated. Although I'm going to ask Bryce. Bryce, what do you think? You think I could, I could be a, play a part next year? Think I make a good shepherd? <laughs> uh. Allow me to offer my congratulations to our children. Thank you so very, very much for telling that story. And, uh, and thank you, congregate, particularly our guests who have come to support our children today. Thank you so much for being here and for supporting them and for encouraging them. Um, I can tell you that uh, as somebody who gets up in front of people every week, getting children to get up and to experience that and to try telling that story for the first time is such a, such a difficult thing to do and to be able to look out and to see friendly faces who are smiling back at them and enjoying this process together is such an important part of what it means for them to grow up as a part of a church and to grow up as a community. And so we're so grateful for you all showing up and showing such wonderful support and for singing along and for being a part of telling this gospel story together. We're going to continue to tell this gospel story, but we're going to take it from the global and bring it down to the specific as we pray for the needs that God has laid on our hearts this week and uh, to share the requests that have been offered to us. And so I, I like to, I'd invite you uh, to turn to your insert where there are some of the uh, requests that have been printed, and I have a couple updates for you. Um, we invite you to be in prayer uh, for Camden Lewis. Uh, Vicki Mayo asked us to pray for that 10-year-old who, has, um, who is already uh, battling some severe physical handicaps and is now in rather serious uh, condition with pneumonia. So please be in prayer for little Camden. Uh, an update on someone we've been praying for for quite some time, uh, Caitlin Carr. Um, she has completed her chemo and radiation is to begin soon. And so for that, we give thanks and we pray uh, for her next step in her, journey, her cancer journey. Uh, Wanda asked us to pray for her great niece, Abby Rhodes. Um, she ended up in the uh, emergency room. Um, thought it was some respiratory issues like a lot of us have been dealing with. Turns out um, it's possible blood clots. Um, and, so, and as of this morning, tests have been inconclusive. And so for Abby and for her family, we offer our prayers. Um, on the respiratory uh, thing, uh, we ask you to pray for our brother, Bob Finn, um, who has been diagnosed with COVID. Um, and so please be in prayer for Bob. That's why he's not able to be here today. Um, I know his birthday was this weekend, and so nature saw fit to give him COVID for his birthday. So Bob, our best goes out to you, and we pray for a swift recovery. Um, on the notion of recovery, um, we've been praying for uh, Lucas Foreman, um, a little, our, our brother in Christ who was having a liver transplant, um, and he has been extubated and is doing well uh, as, of, as of this morning, and so Lucas continues to do well, and so to Rose and to her family, um, we, we offer thanks, we continue to pray for Lucas. And then finally, um, if you haven't already heard this morning, we've been asked to pray um, for, the, for the terrible damage, the tornadoes that went through uh, Tennessee last night. Um, and so please be in prayer for the, the greater Nashville area. My geography gets a little funny around Tennessee, but I know there's an area there that was particularly damaged. Um, and uh, Belinda reached out to me this morning and said that uh, one of Rob Finn's very good friends had his house destroyed as a part of that. And so we'll, we'll be moving into a bed and breakfast um, for the time being while they try to figure out what's going on there. And so, um, so I do not have the name of this friend, uh, suffice to say. Um, and I doubt Rob is the only one whom we know down in that area who has friends affected. But, um, but for these terrible tornadoes, please keep our friends in your prayers. So friends, with these requests in mind, and not only these, but also the ones that you bring with you quietly, let us go before our Lord and to offer up our prayers.
Lord, as I got a chance to sit in a pew today, I was reminded as the kids were telling me this story one more time, the story of your birth. I was reminded of the psalmist who said, out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have found praise to silence the foe and the avenger. Lord, there is not a weapon that's ever been formed that has figured out how to push against the child and the enthusiasm of telling this gospel story yet once more. So God, we pause and we say thank you for the children and the youth of St. Mary's. Lord, for their energy, for their friendship, Lord, for their wonderful awkwardness as they try to get in front of a congregation and to walk through a Christmas pageant yet again. And we thank you, Lord, that in the, in the, in the fun and the beauty of that, that we hear this beautiful story told once more, that you did not see fit to stay far away, but that you came and dwelt among us. You walked among us in our lowliness and in our poverty and in our homelessness and in our doubts and our concerns, and you showed us the way of life. So thank you, Lord, for whispering that story to us yet again. And we pray, God, that as we go from here, as we anticipate the Christmas season still unfolding and a week ahead, that, Lord, it would not simply be just a story that we tell, but, Lord, we would be reminded that wherever we go, Lord, you are being born into this world, into that same lowliness, into that same earthiness, into the same journeys that we walk. You yet walk amongst us and show us the way of life. And so, Lord, that's why we offer our prayer requests, because in these places of lowliness, we seek your presence in profound ways. So we offer up those things which we have been asked to pray for, and Lord, it is indeed our privilege to do so. We pray for this young man, Camden Lewis, Lord, 10 years old, who's already uh, dealt a heavy hand with some severe physical handicaps, but is now, uh, now burdened by pneumonia. So we pray for him today. Ask, Lord, that, uh, that Lord, his recovery would be swift and that he would return to full health. So Lord, we offer him up to you, this precious child of God. We give thanks for the good news of Caitlin Carr as she continues on this journey of cancer. Lord, we thank you that chemo is now behind her. Lord, we pray that radiation would, uh, would, Lord, would be just as successful. And that, Lord, her story would be one of your health and healing and wholeness in her life. So we pray for Abby Rhodes. And Lord, uh, she's uh, in the emergency room, Lord, certainly not a place any of us want to be. And Lord, with this, uh, this threat of potential blood clots hanging over her head, Lord, we pray that uh, the doctors and nurses would find out what's going on and that, uh, Lord, whatever it is that she might find a road to recovery. And so we lift her up today. Lord, we pray for our brother Bob Finn as he's battling COVID. And Lord, just knowing what's going on in the congregation, we pray for an awful lot of us who are battling an awful lot of respiratory things or just a lot of sickness, a lot of crud going around, Lord. Would you be with Bob and be with many of us who are battling um, respiratory issues, Lord? And would you restore Bob to health quickly? Lord, we, uh, we give thanks for little Lucas Foreman as he continues to make, uh, make progress from his liver transplant, Lord. And thank you that he's exp extubated and continues to do well. And so, Lord, we lift him up as a sign of your glory and your healing. And finally, oh God, we pray for those in Tennessee, Lord, who have been affected by these horrible tornadoes. Lord, as we continue to hear stories like this, Lord, we recognize that our prayers and our compassion are going to be needed more than ever. And so we pray for all those who are affected and all those who are on the ground taking care of their neighbors. Lord, we ask, um, Lord, that all the aid that is required would find their way there and that you would take care of the lives of those who've survived. And we ask, Lord, that you're for your compassion upon those who have passed away. Lord, alongside these requests, we offer up the request that we bring with us in the quiet of our hearts. <clears throat> All these things we ask, O oh God, not because we're seeking to climb up to you, but because in the Christmas story you have shown us that you bend down to hear us and that you come and walk amongst us. And so we lift them up knowing that you listen and that you care and that you love us. We ask these in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who was born in a stable and has died for our salvation. One God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> and now together, my friends, I invite you to pray the prayer with me that, uh, that I, this Savior, this one who was born in a manger, who when he grew older taught us to pray, together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> yes, unfortunately, I'm one of those for whom we pray for respiratory conditions. But uh, nevertheless, um, Lord, as we, have re- as we have received the gift of uh, the story that our children have told, we want to continue to say thank you for the gifts that all of us bring here today to continue then further the work of Jesus Christ in the world. And so we're going to bring our offerings forward and again, just want to say thank you for what each and every one of you do to continue to support the work of the church that today finds its way into the, into the hands and into the costumes and in the mouths of our children, um, but in so many ways uh, finds its way into our community in so many wonderful ways. And as it comes forward, I'm going to invite you that, um, that if you would like to be a part of that giving, we invite you to give here at the end of the year and to, and to consider being a giver throughout the year. Um, we, lo- we, we want to continue to do more things like this. We want to continue to expand our outreach into the community. And that only happens as we bring our resources together and, and seek to carry out the mission of Jesus Christ in the world. And so you're invited into that journey as we try to touch lives as our children have touched our lives today. And so the offering is going to come forward. We invite you to join me in together blessing and giving thanks to God as we sing our doxology. Let us pray. Holy One, this Advent season we wait in peace and we give in peace. A peace deeper than our anxiety and fear. A peace growing from our trust in your loving power. Receive these generous offerings and use them to bring your peace to our world. Amen. And so as we prepare to depart, uh, I was talking to Mary Ann and said, we always have a shortage of Advent hymns at this time of the year. There's like three that we all know. And I was like, I always try to bring some more Advent hymns into it so that we might, uh, you know, so we might observe this season leading up to Christmas. And uh, we found one today that I was like, well, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. And then as soon as Mary Ann played it, I was like, oh, actually, I have heard that one before. So Mary Ann's going to play it through one time, and then together we will join in singing. Hymn number 114 in the New Century Hymnal, Return my people.
And as the kids sang, <clears throat> sleep in heavenly peace, so we hear the words of the Apostle Paul who reminds us of that peace when he says, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in all ways, and the Lord of peace will be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> Thank you all so very much. Please be seated for just a couple of announcements. And uh, as you are being seated, um, I just our children uh, who are hanging out here, um, today you did a wonderful, magnificent job. We celebrate you and say thank you so much. And I would love for the congregation to be able to say that to you. So after our announcements, I'm going to invite all the kids who have had a part uh, to come up to the front. I will not be in the back, all right? Go to hang out with the kids. Um, and so I'm going to invite the kids to come forward, and if you all would come by and just shake their hands and let them know what a wonderful job they did. If you're looking for me, I will be out in the vestry, okay? So if you want to come say hi to me, I'll be out there. But we invite our children to hang out here for a couple minutes, and please come forward and wish them well. A couple of announcements before we depart, and we have some celebrations we want to get to. We want to begin with the altar flowers, which are gorgeous today and are given to the glory of God and in honor of Madison Matthias's golden birthday. She's 10 years old on December the 10th. So 10 on 10, 10. So Madison, where did you get off to? She's back there. She snuck out. All right, yes. So a happy birthday to Madison. Um, that is from your family. And so thank you for sharing uh, your gifts with us today on your birthday. We also have a couple of tech sponsorships. Um, as mentioned earlier, a tech sponsorship in honor of Bob Finn's birthday on December the 9th, and that is from Belinda. And so we say thank you very much and wish Bob a very happy birthday as he rests and recuperates. And also a tech sponsorship in memory of Abe Weller on his 73rd birthday, which will be on Tuesday. Yes, today is the 10th, correct. And also the three-year anniversary of his passing, which was this previous week. And we miss you and we love you from the entire Weller family. And so thank you so much, Wanda, and thank you for allowing us to honor his memory today. Just a heads up as to what's coming, because we are full force in Christmas season, and things are rolling. We had our Christmas comes to life last night. It went wonderful. Our Christmas pageant today. Um, we will be back in here. <coughs> excuse me. Ooh, I got to get through this. On Wednesday morning, continuing Advent prayer and communion service, uh, 7.30 a.m. You're welcome to be here or join us online from now through Christmas. We have two more of those to go, um, and they have been wonderful. I've really enjoyed them, and uh, folks have really been chiming in. And so whether you want to be here or uh, gather wherever you are, um, a time of communion as we prepare for the coming of our Savior. You're invited to join. Next Sunday... Um, next Sunday, our kids get to take a rest, and we are going to put our choir up to it. Next Sunday, we look forward uh, in this space to celebrating our Christmas cantata with our choir. And so we invite you to come and just allow their gift of music to just kind of wash over you. I've been hearing them practice. It's sounding wonderful. And so next Sunday is going to be just as much a blessing as today was. And so we look forward to that. <clears throat> For those of you planning ahead, our Christmas Eve services, um, we will be here at 4 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Um, it'll be the identical service at 4 and 7, um, except our bells will be playing at the 4 o'clock service. Our choir will be here at the 7 p.m. service. Communion will be served at both. Candle lighting will happen at both. Um, and so we just want to make a couple options available to you so that you and your family can join us as you see fit. And we look forward. Um, it's always a gorgeous, gorgeous, and beautiful evening in here um, on Christmas Eve as we celebrate the arrival of our Savior. <clears throat> And I should have said prior to that, that on December the 24th, in the morning, we will not be having a full-blown service, um, just with our, with our volunteers and everybody that's involved to put on Christmas Eve, we're focusing on the evening, but that we will have something in here on, on the morning. Um, and so we will be doing a sort of a Sunday morning prayer service. If you've watched our Wednesday morning services, it'll look a lot like that. Something around about a half hour or so where we'll come and pray. If you want to come in the morning, you're welcome to do so. You can join us online as well. And so December the 24th in the morning, very low-key, but a sacred environment nevertheless for those who want to come in the morning. And then we'll be hitting it full bore on, in our evening services 4 and 7. And then final announcement is that um, we're continuing uh, to do our stewardship drive here at the end of the year. And so pledge commitment cards and year-end giving information um, is, uh, is on the back of your insert. Please check that out. There's also cards at our information table if you have any questions about uh, how you can contribute to the work we, we do here financially. And we'd be very grateful for that. 
And one last announcement, um, for those of you who have ordered St. Mary's merchandise, um, that's been delayed just a week, and so that will be here next Sunday, December the 17th. And so you can be here to grab that, and we look forward to having all that come in. And so I think that should do it for today. Our children, thank you so much. Our guests, thank you so much. We pray that today was a blessing for you and that, uh, and that your heart is filled with the gospel as you prepare to go into the world and to go to, pro- to proclaim God's peace and good.